warning. Corpse Party contains animated disturbing imagery, which may be featured in this review. If you are sensitive to that sort of thing, this game may not be for you. Be advised. Welcome back to the game collection. I'm Super Derek, and... Oh, hey. Sorry, I'm just not feeling in the Halloween spirit this year. And this is Corpse Party, Book of Shadows. Following my review of Corpse Party last year, there was no question that I wanted to dig into the rest of the series. This is a cautionary tale though, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes when you're expecting a treat, you get tricked instead. First, let's get something out of the way. The first Corpse Party really straddled the RPG line, but had enough charm and RPG trappings to let me turn a blind eye. I expected that the direct sequel, Book of Shadows, would be an evolution of that gameplay style, but I was wrong. So, so wrong. Book of Shadows is a visual novel with some light puzzle solving elements and an interface that is sometimes reminiscent of a dungeon crawler. Needless to say, it's not exactly my forte, but I'll do my best to give this game its due diligence. Book of Shadows is a guide-in of sorts to the first title. It takes place in an alternate timeline following the events of one of the wrong endings from the first game, except for the bonus chapter which is a direct sequel to the canon ending of the first game, and in my opinion that's a bit of a weird choice. In fact, this whole game is just a twisted ball of weird choices that constantly left me scratching my head throughout the game. The original Corpse Party had plenty of wrong endings, and you knew they were wrong endings because your characters would die and you'd have to start over. You knew you found a good ending because you'd be alive and the story was allowed to progress down a continuous thread. Good endings were your motivation to make it to the end of the game. Team Grease Grease threw this all out the window with Book of Shadows because in this game, even the right endings sometimes end in death for you and your character. In addition, each chapter is a standalone side story that doesn't interconnect with any of the other chapters, so what we're left with is a game with a disjointed plot and no real reward system to encourage you to continue playing. Each chapter of the game starts with lengthy cutscenes that provide some backstory to the characters that didn't get much exposition from the last title. This is a nice idea, but was poorly executed. The cutscenes were far too long for far too little payoff. One particular chapter comes to mind, which had an hour-long prologue followed by 30 minutes of gameplay. That's 30 minutes, including getting both possible endings. Even on paper this sounds terrible, and I have no idea how that arc was greenlit. Most chapters feature some form of navigation and puzzle solving in between the visual novel interface plot delivery system. This was a big step back from the top-down perspective from the first game. However, I preferred having that dungeon crawler-esque navigation menu to some of the chapters which featured neither navigation nor any form of puzzle solving. By far the best chapter of the game was the final, bonus chapter, which as far as I can tell only had one ending. The navigation menu was changed up a bit, which was a breath of fresh air, and the chapter was much denser with puzzle solving than the others. But the kicker is that this chapter exists simply to bridge the gap between the original Corpse Party and the Vita title, Blood Drive. This final chapter ends with a cliffhanger which ended up making it feel like a playable advertisement for Blood Drive, and when an advertisement for another game is the high point of your game, that's a really bad sign. Despite the regression of the navigation to a menu system, the world of Heavenly Host manages to still be very atmospheric. The school's layout is very similar to the first game and will feel intuitive to players of the first title. Each square on the grid layout of the school map has an illustration of the view from within the hallway or school room. Being given a new perspective of the school was pretty novel, pun not intended. On the other hand, many of the illustrations were reused, so that novelty wears thin pretty quickly, and never even came close to to making up for the poor choice in navigation system. 
In the first Corpse Party, the sound design was definitely one of the game's strongest points, and I can say with certainty that the 3D stereo audio in Book of Shadows is by far and away the highlight of the game. Not because it's improved in any way above the original, just because everything else was worse. Playing the game with headphones on is recommended. I was definitely glancing over my shoulders as I'd make my way through the game. The sounds of ghost children's laughter and singing or running behind you is exactly as creepy as it sounds. My overall impression is that the game would have worked better as DLC to the original. If they had just reused the original system from the first game, I would have enjoyed it quite a bit more, and with the DLC price I might even be able to justify recommending the game to you. But as it stands, I can't. Corpse Party Book of Shadows killed my enthusiasm for the franchise and murdered my Halloween spirit. Ever want to know why I feel the way I do? Check out my playthrough by following the annotation in the lower right. If you'd like to support the show, consider becoming a patron for access to cut and behind-the-scenes content, status updates, and video commentaries just like these awesome people.